So the bad news is we're not going to have a rabbi give a sermon tonight. So I apologize, but we promise you that you, they are preparing some of the most beautiful, inspiring, elevating sermons for the high holidays. You will get your fill of their wisdom, of their words. This Rosh Hashanah, I know we'll all be there. Uh, but this is going to be a little slichot, a mini slichot, a sort of a sermon and song slichot. So uh, we're going to start with a beautiful piece, Or Zarua. Or Zarua Let Tzadik, light is sown for the righteous, Uli Shrei Lev Simcha, and for the upright joy. This actually comes, strangely to me, right before Kol Nidre. Right before Kol Nidre. Imagine all the prayers you might put before Kol Nidre, right? This is like a big deal. And we, we stand up and we sing, light is sown for the righteous. What, what is that even doing there? Kol Nidre, am I, am I thinking about being a tzaddik, being a righteous person? I'm focusing on what I've done wrong, as we said. My focus, I think, should, might be elsewhere. And this light, what are we talking about? This light that's sown? It's very mysterious. Um, so let's go into it just for a moment before we sing it. What is this light, first of all? We learn about the world to come, right? The world after you're, uh, say, after you're in this body and you're just your soul, and you can't anymore do the things you do in this world. You can't eat challah with a blessing like we do on Shabbat. You can't uh, physically hug your grandkids like we do here in the world. All these things you can't do anymore. What can you do? You can sit in heaven and you can watch the tzaddikim enjoying this light that comes from God, this light that's in the world to come. And uh, that light is the one that we're talking about when we sing this song right before Kol Nidre. The Gemara explains this light is not anything like the light we're looking at now. It's not even like the light you feel when you hug your grandkids. That's a kind of light, right? This is called Or Haganuz, a hidden light. A hidden light. It's so hidden that it should not be accessible while I'm a soul in this world. There should be no way that I can access or contact this light. It is completely outside. That's the light that the tzaddikim enjoy. That's the light we're saying is uh, planted before we say Kol Nidre. But there's one other thing the Gemara explains, well, actually seven, but in this case one that, that is uh, functional, that was created before the world, and that is tshuva, right? For all you Gemara heads, the Gemara in Pesachim says that there's seven phenomena, say, that were created before the world, so Torah and tshuva, Gan Eden, there's a list. Tshuva is also created before the world, so where that light is hidden, whatever that is, tshuva is there too. So what does that mean? On Yom Kippur, we get to the heart of tshuva. Yom Kippur is our Shabbat of Shabbats. It's that one moment where we really are back with God. And so the rabbis explain, Yom Kippur is actually our one A glimpse of this hidden light this Or Haganuz. So I invite you as we sing uh, Or Zarur Al Tzadik, start pointing your mind and your heart towards Tshuva and see if you and I, as we make this journey, can catch a glimpse of this hidden light that transcends the world. Or Zarur Al
I'm sure a lot of you have seen me since I was about this tall. Um, but something that I, I just wanted to talk about. And I would. The Barosh Hashanah was always one of those pieces where I heard it and I felt it. And now we feel on this slichot every single year. We are called to reflect on the fragility of existence and the need for peace, justice, and compassion. And then we do some serious soul searching, looking inward. This year, we have really seen how fragile human life really is. There has been so much loss, so much devastation. We're struggling to stay afloat as we deal with an unimaginable grief. So now, more than ever, is an incredible time to pray these words of Barosh Hashanah, which carry so much heaviness and hope right now. Our shared humanity links all of us as we now pray for renewal. <laughs> Ooh. 
of that prayer, as we come together in this sacred moment of reflection, we turn to Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King, our Mother, our Creator. This ancient prayer calls us to confront our shortcomings with humility, seeking divine mercy and guidance. In its words, we acknowledge both our vulnerability and our potential for renewal. So let us open our hearts to its timeless plea as we ask for compassion, for strength, and the courage to become our best selves in the year ahead. Avinum <laughs> alkenu Oh, 